Europe has been a tough market for America's automakers. A price war is costing Ford market share, and General Motors just closed out its 11th straight year of losses in Europe. In the U.S., the picture is quite a bit brighter for GM, but that's partly due to more aggressive incentives. You just heard from Ford CEO Alan Mulally joining us with his answers to our questions about pricing, about Europe, and GM's remarkable turnaround as the company's vice chairman, Stephen Gursky. He's live from the Geneva Motor Show in Switzerland. Uh, Steve, we talked to Alan Mulally about his strategy for fighting higher oil and gasoline prices. What's GM's? Well, uh, there's a number of strategies here, but uh, we'd rather be lucky than smart. We got three new small cars hitting the market in the U.S. We got a Chevy Volt that's much celebrated. It's very high mileage. My wife's driving one. She's getting over 90 miles a gallon on it. We got a brand new Chevy Cruze, which gets 42 miles a gallon. And we have a Sonic coming later this year, which is a small car, another uh, high mileage vehicle. So in the near term, we got a lot of small cars coming. Longer term, it's about bringing fuel efficient technologies to market, and we plan on accelerating doing that. Okay, but you've ramped up some of your light truck production. What's going to happen to all that inventory if we get a sustained increase in oil prices? Surely $100 oil has to have some impact on GM sales and especially those trucks. Certainly, uh, we worry about $100 oil all the time. Uh, we're wargaming that all the time. Part of the strategy is to keep inventories low. You will see sales come out later today, and you'll see inventories come out later today, and you'll see that they are uh, uh, relatively low, and that's been a strategy to keep inventories down in this market. Uh, Steve, Volkswagen, Citroën, uh, Renault, Fiat, they're all slashing prices in Europe. Are you going to play that game? Uh, Europe is a very competitive market. It's a very tough market. Uh, Opel's brand has uh, suffered over the last year or so because of all they've been through. We're in the process of rebuilding Opel's brand here, uh, and therefore we think at the margin our pricing can start to do a little better in Europe versus where it's been. But remember, coming from the base we were, where Opel had a lot of political issues they were working their way through as the company in North America worked its way through the bankruptcy. So is that to say that you're not going to match some of the price cuts we've seen, the new Volkswagen Passat, for example, selling for less than the old model. These other automakers offering thousands of euros in incentives. Right. Don't get me wrong. The market is very competitive here, but we're we're trying to rebuild our brand. Uh, rebuild our brand. We produce good cars here. We want to get consumers to uh, understand the value equation that we provide here, similar to what we did in the U.S., and we have a long way to go. We're going to stay competitive in the market, don't get me wrong, but we're coming from a different base from where they're coming from. Uh, Stephen, between rising oil prices and this price war that we've been discussing on automobiles, how do you meet your target to break even in Europe by the end of this year? Well, there's twofold to the uh, to the recovery in Europe. Uh, one is cost. We've taken a lot of cost out of Europe, and we continue to attack the cost structure of Europe. Uh, we've closed some capacity. Some people have left. We've taken fixed costs down. And the other side is revenue, is trying to improve the value of our brand, improve the customer perception of our brand. Uh, and that's starting to work. The share was up in the fourth quarter. The share started to do a little better this year. Uh, and it's about running that play. Uh, Steve, people are waiting to see GM's new cars here in North America, but until then you've been willing to use price to lure buyers into some of the older models. At what point do you feel you need to exercise some discipline to start curtailing some of those more aggressive incentives that have helped your sales over the first couple of months of the year? So the bad news is the competitive activity has picked up. Our incentives that you talked about has picked up. Uh, I think the market was a little stronger than we thought. I think the good news, though, is the consumers are responding to these incentives. And I think that says something about the economic activity here. Uh, we're going to continue to watch this. We are very mindful of the profitability, and we're very mindful of what got us here and what has been involved in the improvement and it's been part cost and part price and uh, we're going to continue to pay attention to that. Stephen, I want to look ahead to September. General Motors has some UAW contracts expiring. I'd like to know from you, how will the escalating battle over organized labor here in America affect that next round of collective bargaining talks? 
Uh, I'm not sure it's a big deal, to be honest with you. The, the company uh, during the bankruptcy went through a lot with the UAW. Uh, it was very transparent. The bankruptcy, if there's any good news out of the bankruptcy, it forced transparency on the situation. Uh, so the books were open. I think the UAW knows what the business model is all about. Uh, and I think it's important, by the way, that all constituents participate in the recovery of this company without upsetting the business model, so to speak. So uh, we have dialogue with the UAW all the time. There are issues we need to work our way through, and we do that. But um, I would say the issues going on in the states, we've worked our way through those issues in the last year or two. All right, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. Stephen Gursky, the vice chairman of General Motors, live with us from the Geneva Auto Show.